Today we're going to talk about the Heil Air Motion Transformer developed by Dr. Oscar Heil in the 1970s. He developed this high frequency transducer in response to the fact that he did not feel that tweeters, be it ribbon or dome, were fast enough and more pow powerful enough to reproduce high frequencies the way he desired. So he went about studying bees and dragonflies. Why did he do that? Because they can move their bodies with the flimsiest of wings very quickly and powerfully, and he wanted to know how they went about doing that. He felt like if he incorporated those motions or mechanisms into a tweeter, it would do the same. It would reproduce high frequencies quickly with more power than a conventional dome or ribbon could reproduce. So he studied them. And what did he find? He found that rather than going up and down like this, their wings didn't do that. That's not how they produced lift. They did it by oscillating like this. So he took that idea and he produced what he could best do with the current technology was a membrane that moved in and out like this, like an accordion. Why did he do that? Because when the accordion goes in like this, the membrane, it squeezes the air out. In and out, not like a dome or a ribbon or electrostatic speaker, this reproduces air velocity five times what you could get out of a dome, a ribbon, or electrostat. There are very powerful magnets on either side of this membrane, not this one, but the one in the Highlander Motion Transformer. These electrostat, these wire elements are laid in between here and here and here and here. So when a signal's pushed through these elements, it attracts and expands, attracts and expands, and help with the magnets on either side. Now these magnets have to be very, very powerful to reproduce the volume of sound and the dynamics he was looking for. So let me show you how he went about doing that. This is an original Heil Air Motion Transformer. Uh, it is still being reproduced or produced by electrostatic sound systems who, believe it or not, were the original producer back in the 70s. They are still in business. Uh, Dr. Heil's patent has long since expired, so you might see lots of other air motion transformers on the market, and they have greatly improved the design over time. Instead of using a thin aluminum foil, they've used captain fibers, which look a lot like this. It's a lot stronger, can take a lot more power. But with that said, let's take a look at the original Heil, Heil Air Motion Transformer. It comes in a beautiful box, packed nicely, in a sock. So let's take a look at this. This is very, very heavy. As I said before, it uses very powerful magnets to be able to squeeze the membrane thusly. So there is the diaphragm. As you can see, it's not colored tan like a captain membrane. It's like a type of a plastic or mylar with, with the little coils going through it. I can show you a closer picture later on. Um, powerful magnets. They're ferrite. This sucker's quite heavy. It's been used in quite a few speakers. You probably noticed back, even going back to the 70s, it was being used for the Heil Air Motion speakers, which I heard originally in Germany. I won't tell you the date because it would be dating myself, but that was my first exposure to high fidelity sound systems. So took it from there. That's the story on the original. I'm going to show you an air motion transformer that is larger than this, far more powerful than this, and it's made by Bema. Now let's take a look at the inner workings of the Heil Air Motion Transformer. This is the largest Heil Transformer made. It is the Bema TPL-150H. It has a cast aluminum horn attached to it. This is the Mac Daddy of Heil Transformers. In reference to that, the Great Heil, which is made by ESS, which is the original company that uh, contracted with Dr. Oscar Heil to make his Transformers, uh, made one, the largest they make currently. 
is about two-thirds the size of this diaphragm. The magnetic gauss, which is the strength of the magnet, is one-half that. So this is the largest air motion transformer on the market today, which is the one we use on our speakers. Let's take a look at the diaphragm itself. Let's get a little closer here and see what we've got. So you'll notice that the diaphragm, let me get the, see if I can get a little closer, is pleated. Those pleats move back and forth, creating an amplification, so to speak, of the sound speed. Let's get a little bit centered more here. There we go. And um, when they squeeze together, the sound is accelerated about five times its normal speed. So in a way, it's like a compression driver that uses pleats that fold together based on very, very strong magnets on either side. The beauty of this BEMA uh, air motion transformer is that it does have a horn attached to it. Now, why did they do that? They did that because it is able to amplify the upper mid range and project that forward rather than dropping it off. So instead of say rolling off at um, maybe Oh, I don't know, 2,500 hertz. It goes all the way down to maybe 1,500 hertz. And, uh, of course, the smaller the diaphragm, the higher it, it uh, rolls off. So this BEMA transformer here is quite capable of reaching down to, say, maybe the controversial 10-inch driver. It certainly reaches down to our 8-inch driver. Here, the Mark Audio Alpair. 12p which is an eight inch paper driver and we made it with this lovely lovely bema tpl 150h the mac daddy of air motion transformers